Hello, everybody. Um, this is DFS Chan. Um, coming to you here on October nineteenth, two thousand twenty-two, to talk about the quarterfinals of the two thousand twenty-two League of Legends Worlds tournament. Um, I'm excited to be back. Um, for this segment, um, as we've done a pretty good job, really good job actually so far predicting, um. I'd say seven out of eight um, teams that advance to the quarterfinals. So props to us, even though it kind of was chalky um, with the LPL and LCK teams. Um, as you guys see, Rogue was the only non-LCK or LPL team that advanced to the quarterfinals. Um, but yeah, just to recap, we have um, Rogue. Um, that advanced out of their own group as the first seed. Um, and then we have, uh, that's so they're from LEC from Europe. And then we have JDG. And then we have RNG. And we have EDG as the three teams from the LPL that are in the quarterfinals. And then we have T1, Damwon Kia, Genji, and DRX all four teams from being the LCK in Korea. So yeah, it's exciting. Um, kind of went as expected. It was a shocking uh, news that the top esports uh, bounced out of their group um, in lieu of Rogue advancing. Um, so that is eight, one shocking news we've had so far in the, in the tournament, but other than that, it's been very chalky and very, um, it's been, it's just been going the way that we expected and based on the Vegas odds as well. So it's, you know, really hasn't been that exciting um, in terms of having any upsets or having any underdogs pull off upsets. As you guys saw, um, the L uh, LCS, North American teams, did not do well. Whereas LEC teams did a little bit better, but not as <laughs> poorly as the LEC uh, LCS teams um, from the United States. So given all of that, I wanted to make probably two videos, including this one. I'll cover today uh, these two games here the, that, that are going to happen today, uh, tomorrow on Thursday and Friday. So Friday, Thursday, tomorrow, we're having Rogue versus JDG. That's going to be a pretty good matchup, even though I think it's going to be one-sided for many reasons, and I'll talk about them here shortly. And then for Friday's game between RNG and T1, which is going to be a banger, and the repeat of the midseason tournament or midseason invitational MSI finals series. So... Yeah, so I'll talk about those two matchups in this video, and then I'll have another video that we'll talk about that in which I'll talk about you know the other two matchups. So first between Rogue and JDG, so like even before I saw the odds, I knew that JDG was gonna be a favorite. Um, JDG was the number one seed from the LPL, and they finished in the group stage as the first seed, winning six games out of seven games. Um, Whereas Rogue had a similar um, uh, outcome as well. I, I, I'm I sorry that I, I think I said I they finished as a number one seed, but you're right. Uh, they finished as a number two seed because DRX actually won that um, matchup between them two. So, um, but yeah, anyway, regardless, I think JDG should be the favorite, but I just did not know that it was going to be this big of a favorite minus 1100 so which i mean i get it i get why they have that it's the lpl versus lec basically um and jdg arguably is the best lpl team um in this tournament or just coming into the tournament um i think jdg is the best team fighting team um other than probably gen g at the moment um t1's been pretty good in team fights as well um, but they just play more differently than JDG and Genji does. So, um, but like I said, JDG 
should be the favorite, and I think it's it's not gonna be that close. Um, I know Rogue has played really well, um, so far in the tournament, especially in the first week, right? Like first week they had one game best of one, um, one each day, and that really helped them out. But in a series like this, first and then the second week, sorry, second week before I jump to the series. Second week, Rogue did not look that great. Um, I think the teams, other teams in that group have figured them out. I think Rogue, Rogue's wins from the first week were all tied with Marang carrying that team and making some plays around the mid lane and the bottom lane, whereas Odo Amne in the top lane played more of a tanky role. Um, so I just feel like they found their identity, but at the same time, it was not... Um, that was probably one of very few win conditions they have. Um, and the teams kind of limited the the in-game growth of Marang and putting a lot of resources um from his teammates um for Rogue, um, where you know, where the, the other teams, the opponents, you know, stopped that from happening and Marang struggled. So I just feel like unless they figure out another way to win, um, but that's that seems like the only way that they feel comfortable, um, you know, pushing for the win and, in, in you know, with their identity. So unfortunately, that just puts a lot of a um, lot of uh, responsibility and a lot of pressure on Marang in jungle. Um, I just feel like if he does not make enough plays or if he does not get the types of or the amount of resources that he needs to get to the point where he can carry um, along, you know, with the help of his teammates and other lanes, I just feel like they their win conditions are very, very limited. Um, and I feel like it's just a poor matchup for Rogue against JDG because that's kind of how JDG likes to play as well. But except, um, you know, they have other um, players and other lanes. Um, they have players in other lanes that can carry compared to uh, Rogue's uh, laners as well. So, for example, JDG, really, their, their engine and their win conditions are mostly tied to Kanavi um, carrying and making plays as well, kind of similar to Rogue, but um, it's a lot more diverse than Malrang is. I think Malrang's is a little more just kind of making plays around the map, get in team fights, get on to get into V2. Um, and team fights, he's been really good, um, but not as good as when he makes trash make plays uh, 2v2, you know, with a lot of resources dedicated to him. Um, whereas JDG's Kanavi, um, I think he can play much better then Malrang in team fights, and he is a much better um, player around the map, in my opinion, around the objectives. Um, for example, I think his smite rate is ridiculously high from the LPL. Um, but anyway, like I digress, but like I, I just feel like JDG has a lot more win conditions than Rogue. Um, and then Rogue's win condition, which is very limited, I think um, JDG does a really good job of that. And they will do a good job of um, neutralizing that win condition that Rogue has. So I just feel like um, as long as JDG does not make the same types of like stupid mistakes around objectives that sometimes they make, just like a bonehead move that sometimes I've seen JDG make in the LPL and also in, during the first week, um, I just feel like JDG shouldn't should not drop a game in the series. But... Just given that, um, given that JDG will probably end up doing or making a mistake like that in in a best of five series, I'm gonna have to predict uh, JDG three to one. That's my prediction. JDG three to one. I do think for DFS purposes, um, it's a two game slate um, over the course of two days, so any team is playable including Rogue, um, but at the end of the day, I think JDG will win the series and therefore outscore Rogue very significantly. Unless you think this is going to be like a kill fiesta where both teams uh, score like 20 plus kills in a game on average, I 
it could happen because JDG loves to team fight and loves to skirmish. Um, but I just don't see that happening. I think it's gonna be a lot more up one sided. Um, in the majority of the games that they play in in the series, I think so. I think JD. I'm probably gonna have a lot of exposure to JDG compared to Rogue. So JDG three to one. That's what I'm predicting. All right. RNG versus T1 is a lot more interesting and a lot more um, competitive and a lot more balanced in terms of the matchup. Um, the odds indicate or the fav they favor T1 by what is it at minus 225 um, in a best of five series. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with that, actually. I, I like T1 here today. Um, compared to RNG, I think T1's form has been much better, and the spots where RNG has looked really good, those spots were actually they came against a really bad teams. I think in that group, I think they were in Group D against like Flying Oyster and maybe Hundred Thieves. Was it? Uh, let's let's see. Yeah. I just think, I mean, Flying Oyster was probably the worst team. Yeah, probably the worst team in the group stage, in my opinion. And then 100 Thieves was pretty bad, too. So I just feel like the sp spots where they were really good, um, even though they beat Genji in the first week, they lost to the Genji in the second week, and they lost the tiebreaker. Um so Genji advanced as the first seed. So I just feel like RNG's form is not that great. Whereas T1's has looked really, really good lately, um, especially with Owner in the top lane. He has looked like a god um, in the top lane. He's been the probably the best top laner for sure. But if not, I mean, if not the best player in the whole tournament. If T1 wins the whole tournament, I bet Zeus in the top lane will win the MVP. But they need to get there, right? So um, first they need to beat RNG. And RNG's um, strengths are really in the mid lane with Xiao Hu. And then probably their jungler in Wei. But Wei has been underwhelming at times, in my opinion. Especially um, when he goes up against like superior junglers, like elite junglers, like Je uh, Peanut. Um in the in the group stage where I mean Peanut really outplayed Way in the last two games that they played against each other head to head. Um so I just feel like that in that sense he will probably struggle against owner for T1 as well. Even though owner made some mistakes in the first week, he's his form has gotten much better. And then in the bottom lane, I think Gala and Ming have been okay. I think they have been more set up by their mid laner in Xiaohu and their jungler in Wei. I think Ally and Ming are pretty good in team fights. I think um, they don't make many mistakes, whereas I think Gumayushi and Karia are more likely to make those mistakes. So I'm gonna have to give an advantage to the bottom lane for RNG, um, and then in the top lane, like I said, Breathe has been pretty good, but. Um, owner has been much, much better than Breathe. And then in the mid lane is the very interesting matchup between Faker and Shahu. I think Faker has been okay. I've, I've seen a lot of teams actually target Faker, not just to kill him, but I just feel like he, his laning phase has not been as good as advertised. So I just think he is a very smart player with all of his experience, but he's not the same type of player that he used to be with fast reflexes and fast, you know, um, champion mastery. So I just feel like he just knows how to play the game and how the game can be won in different ways. He's a great leader on um, voice comm, but also in team fights. I think he knows how to win team fights and tell telling his teammates how to win team fights. Um, I just feel like with all that experience, but then at the same time, Xiaohu has the experience as well. I think Xiaohu is probably has probably been the best player for RNG, and I just am fully confident that Xiaohu will probably win that laning matchup against Faker. But I think they're about even in team fights, so I'm gonna have to kind of 
neutralize that there in the mid lane. But like I said, I favor Zeus and owner. And in my opinion, really, those are the two most important positions in the current meta, as mentioned before on my previous videos. So as long as owner does well, like he did in the couple uh, in, 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 in the second week, basically last week, and because I, I know Zeus is gonna play really well, so as long as Faker doesn't feed and he won't, he's too experienced to let Xiaohu, you know, dictate what he wants to do. Basically, I think they'll be fun. And in the bottom lane, yeah, I mean, I think as long as Gumayushi and Karia maintain the form that they're in right now, I'm gonna have to favor um, T1 by a little margin, by a slight margin. But at the end of the day, I just feel like based on current, based on recent form, and based on the strengths of competition that they played in in that group, probably the toughest group, um, in the group stage between T1, EDG, Fnatic, and Cloud9, T1 just swept all three of them. Whereas where when Fnatic was playing really well and coming hot with hot momentum from the knockouts uh, play-in stage, rather, and then EDG was playing well, uh, coming hot from the LPL, but I just feel like T1 took care of business, and they've shown that they have so many different ways to win uh, this game, and in a best of five, I think that is very, very helpful um, and useful to to kind of understand how they can win in different ways when they're, up, when they're ahead, when they're behind, um, they know what to do. Um, so I just feel like they know how to win in this meta. So as long as they do a pretty good job in bans and picks, which I think they will, given the new coach or given the coaching shuffle that they did with Bengi uh, being the head coach, I think T1 will do a great job. I think I'm predicting T1 over RNG 3-2. Three, three to two. So I think it's gonna, it is going to go to full five. Uh, silver scrapes. I think T1 is gonna end up winning though. However, um, I from DFS standpoint, you know, I think this, you know, I, I'll probably have exposure to both teams, both RNG and T1 at the end of the day. But I'll have more exposure to T1. I'll have a lot of exposure to JDG from that earlier matchup. Um, in terms of the kill upside, I'm gonna have to give an edge to the JDG game, uh, JDG Rogue match. I think when T1 wins, I mean, they've been better lately in this season, in this current meta. Uh, their CKPM is much higher compared to what they were last year in the Worlds. Um, so I like that T1's um, kill, uh, kill upside has gone up and, and the pace has gone up for T1. But at the end of the day, JDG is notoriously known for engaging in a lot of, lot of team fights. And I understand Rogue may try to slow down that process and engage in team fights as only needed um, in later games. But I just feel like that's not how Rogue likes to play. Likes to play. Like I said, they want Malrang, their jungler, to make plays around the map in the early game so that they can snowball. So I just feel like, regardless, like of which angle you look at this game between Rogue and JDG, I think this is gonna be the um, more bloody matchup. So I'll play, play probably have a lot of long stacks JDG and then short stacks using T1 and RNG. But, you know, the ultimate leverage would be playing Rogue just given the lack of ownership that they will have, um, you know, with, with the odds being so low, um, you know, such an underdog in Rogue. But I just feel like JDG is going to win. And then I have T1, like I said, winning RNG, beating RNG three to two. Um, it's going to be a very fun series to watch. Um, and for T1, like I said, if I if I were to pick out some players that I like um, for JDG, it's going to have to go with Kanavi in jungle that you have to start with. Um, and then probably a Gal and then Hope um, and then Missing. I think 369 will be okay. He's had a, He's had at least half of the games that they played in his kill participation rate is really, really low. Um, I think that's fine as long as he's doing a good job controlling that lane and not letting it get out of control. And then for T1, if I have to choose, like I said, Zeus in the top lane um, would be the priority, and which is surprising for him being the top laner. And then I'm going to have to go with Gumayushi 
and then owner and then carry it. I think Faker does not score well um generally. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna go Faker as a priority list. I'll go with any other four of those other teammates that uh, of of his. And then for RNG, like I said, it's their win conditions are tied to Xiaohu playing well and Wei playing well. But from the DFS standpoint, more than likely Gala, um, you know, will score the highest uh, for that team. So I'll, I would prioritize Gala and then Xiaohu and Wei. Um, that would be my um, choice. And then I don't know what Ben is up here. Um, breathe, yeah, I think breathe is interesting. Um, I just don't believe in breathe as much as some other um, League of Legends fanatics may be. So I I'll probably not have any breathe. That might bite me in the ass, you know, after the after the fact. But I just feel like he is not the top laner that I thought he was um, gonna be for RNG. I think Zeus is going to play really well against Breathe. And then I think so Zeus in the top lane would probably be the first one, you know, for the top laner here amongst these four teams that I just talked about. And then 369 for JDG also has the good kill upside um, to score well from the DFS standpoint. So, but anyway, that's all I got for, for you guys today. Like I said, I'll make another video talking about the Damwon Kia versus Genji and the EDG versus DRX later this week. Um, but until then, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please, please hit the like button below. Um, this video was sponsored by True DFS, So thanks to them. And please go check them out um, for their DFS contents. Otherwise, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video and see you later. Good luck out there. Bye-bye.